Hello, my lovelies. Welcome back to Cafecito Podcast with me, Pinky. If you guys are new, please hit that subscribe button so you guys can get notified of the most recent videos going up. If you guys are interested in any personal services, whether it's personal readings or personalized spell work, or any of our, if you want to follow us in any of our other social media outlets, you can find all of that on the description box below. Let's get into it, you guys. Get your coffee, get your wine, get your tea, get your whatever it is that you're into, whatever it is that you want to drink, whether it's whiskey, wine, coffee. I'm having my coffee, you guys. Let's sit at the table and have a conversation. Now, I wanted to bring up the conversation of when you're seeking spiritual advice and guidance, because I think that it is extremely important and it's something that in the practice I never rarely see practitioners talk about and it's something that I really want to talk about because this actually came to it's been weighing very heavy on me um so I'm going to give you guys a very quick rundown I have been working a ritual for a client that had absolutely no idea what the fuck they were carrying they had no idea uh, they just knew that they had been experiencing losses and difficulties after difficulties. So the client came to me seeking guidance. And after doing them a personal consultation, we decided on a ritual that was going to help her to liberate her from those blockages. Now, one of the things that I'm sure not a lot, if you don't practice, and I'm sure you you don't have this understanding, but it is something that I want to talk about and I want to dive deep into. So when we decide, first of all, when we're doing a personal consultation, whatever comes through, most of the time, if the person you're going through is spiritually gifted, they're going to be channeling most of the information that is coming through. Now, if you've ever gone personal consultations with me, you already know how I work. I am not the type of practitioner that will tell you, give me a bit of feedback in regards to what's going on with you. I, you know, I, I, I've i tried to remove myself from that pact. I, from that pack, I should say, I'm not condemning those of you guys out there that do ask for a bit of feedback when it comes to consulting the cards, right? I'm not condemning you guys. Everyone works differently. But to me, as a, let's just say if I was in a practitioner and I would go to someone to give me spiritual advice, I want to see for myself that they are gifted, right? So, in that aspect, I've carried my business a certain type of way, and I've always done it that way. Like I said, if you guys have been following me for a while, if you come to me for consultations, you already know how it goes down, right? I rarely ever ask for feedback. I just dive into the reading. And the reason for this is, again, I don't condemn those that don't, that, uh, don't do that. I don't condemn the ones that do ask for feedback. Everyone does it very differently. But in my practice, I have always, you know, put myself in the other shoe, meaning and I've always put myself in you guys' shoes. And I want to know that the person I'm going to is legit. So that's the reason why whenever I consult, if it's your first time uh, with me, I pretty much give you the rundown. This is how it's going to go down. And the way I do it is, let's just say if it was like a personal tarot reading or something like that, I let them know. Um, so the way I do this is most of the information that comes through, it's going to be information that I am downloading, spiritually downloading that they are communicating with me. I am a vessel of communication and they're able to step in and communicate through me. Um, so whatever it is that you're going through, whatever it is that you need clarity on, they will touch bases on that. Once we're done with that channeling session, if there are any questions left that you have unanswers to, then I will ask you specifically those personal questions and I will give you the direct answers to that, which 95% of the time, they never have questions because it's 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 answered throughout the channeling. So 
like I said, I'm not judging those that don't do it this way. Everyone is free to do it however they choose to do it, right? But my point to this is this. When you go to someone for spiritual guidance or spiritual advice, they have to be spiritually gifted. They have to have, think of it as a foot into the spirit realm and a foot into the earthly bound. That's just how it goes. Now, I myself work with multiple spirits, with multiple deities. I work in the archangel realm as well as demonology. So, again, and the reason I'm bringing this is because I often hear practitioners always talk about like light and love. And this is, if you've been following my podcast, you know I've touched bases on this. But what really irks me and what should irk you guys is when a practitioner is continuously talking about that they just do, they just work with light, that any spell that they provide for you is not dark magic, um, but yet they offer love spells. And to me, that's brown nosing and looking down on practitioners that are openly gifted. And when I say gifted, some of the ones that claim to be only light and love is because they're not gifted. Point blank, period. Because if you, you have to understand, let me give you guys a better understanding. And, and we'll t I'll try to dive deep into like every single aspect that I want to touch bases on. Um, but think of it this way. If you're going to, let's say you're being charged for something and you're going to court and you risk being imprisoned, you're going to go to an attorney that is perfected that area of expertise. If you're going to get surgery, you're not going to go to your neighbor to get surgery or for them to perform surgery on you. You're going to go with an expert or a surgeon that is an expert in that field, right? The same thing as if you're trying to get a house, you're trying to buy a house, you're going to go to a real estate agent. You're going to go to someone that knows the ropes, right? So the same way you have to be discerning in who you choose to get spiritual guidance from or to get spiritual protection from or who you're seeking spiritual guidance and advice from. It's the same thing. You, There's levels to this. And I know that, you know, if you guys follow my social media on Snapchat, I'm, by the way, if you guys don't follow me on social media, I highly encourage you guys to do so. I am not as proactive, which I know I should be. I mean, I've been having my YouTube channel for quite a while. And as you can tell, uh, I pretty much been in the around mid 45,000 followers, around 50,000 followers. That's where I've been the past couple of years. And I know why. It's because I'm not proactive on YouTube and I'm not proactive and rushing and bringing all kind of content to you guys that is bullshit content. I, I'm, I've never been that way. I'm never going to carry myself that way. I'm not about uh, the reason why I created my channel primarily was because I have clients that are from far and would come, you know, they they would save money and work really hard to fly out here and come and see me in person. And they wanted to learn about the practice. So that's the reason why I started my channel. So again, it's not about the views for me. It's not about followers. It's none. Of, it's just putting the information out. And you know, if you've been following me for a while, I don't teach bullshit. And I, whenever I'm teaching you how to do a spell, I'm telling you why we're using those ingredients. I'm telling you, I'm warning um, and giving you what you can expect if you do it a certain type of way. So anyways, my point to this is you want to go to someone that is an expert at what you're seeking guidance for, right? It's the same thing with spiritual community. And I take personal offense um, when, you know, okay, going back to initially what I was talking about with my client. So when I was channeling and I was doing her the reading, I was able to be, I was shown basically, um, what, where it was coming from, and also why. Uh, so after 
communication with my client and after having that conversation we decided to move forward on a ritual now a lot of the times the majority of the times I should say when I'm channeling I'm working with specific spirits okay I'm working with specific spirits and like I said there's levels to this shit right so when we're talking about just I don't like to use this word, but let's just for the sake of this conversation. When we're talking about really dark energy, especially like super shadowy, meaning that they are deliberately making sure that you don't see or that you don't find out where it's coming from or exactly what it is that was put on you. Um, sometimes when I'm channeling, I will be shown, yes, this person has been worked. Yes, this person is carrying this. But I won't be necessarily shown exactly what it is that I'm dealing with until I move forward with whatever liberation spell, whatever cleansing, whatever it is that I'm doing. And the reason for that is because then I dive into the other spirits that I work with. So my point to this is this client that came to me had told me that they had gone and seeked out multiple times from different spirits spiritual practitioners and they just couldn't help her and it was something that she literally got herself in debt literally because of the thousands and thousands that she kept paying and nobody was really helping her so when we decided to do that liberation spell for her when I started diving deep into it I want to say three days after the ritual had begun um, I would or I should say they tried to spiritually attack me and that's when I was able to see and hear and smell what type of spirit I, that client was dealing with. And again, having to deal with something like that is sometimes out of the capacity or understanding of certain practitioners. And when I recognized the scent, I knew immediately who I needed to invoke in that moment. So then therefore I can summon that spirit directly to where I was performing the ritual and bind it. So I can tell you that from experience, and I've been doing this for a very long time, that most practitioners, and I don't want to say all because obviously everyone is educated and experienced in many different ways and many different, everyone has different expertise, right? Um, but I can assure you from the feedback that I get from my clients, most of the practitioners that they seeked out help from would not have no like their head would have like spin so fast because they wouldn't have known what the fuck to do. They would have put their selves and their family or wherever they were performing that ritual uh, in the line because they wouldn't know how to bind first of all they wouldn't know how to summon and they wouldn't know how to bind that spirit so my point to this is that this client seeked many practitioners help and it not to say that they didn't help I'm sure they did because when looking into it and when I started working I seen that they did in fact try uh, but it's like I said sometimes it's outside of their realm of understanding and instead of coming to the client and being like, hey, you know what, this is out of my, this is out of my rank. Um, I did what I had to do. And, and, you know, I would highly encourage you to go and seek help somewhere else, someone that is more um, capable or even has a deeper understanding of what you're dealing with. Like, I would, as a client, I would prefer, you know, my spiritual uh guidance or my spiritual um, person that was helping me to be honest about that unfortunately we and I say we because I include myself in it we in the spiritual community have this thing of egos right of, of having really huge ego and they're just never going to accept when shit is sometimes out of their ranking um but, and, and it's not to make myself look in a certain way. I'm not trying to do that by all means. I'm not. What, I'm, what I am trying to get across is that you need to learn to use discernment. Because, so once that happened and 
you know, like I said, I, I think it was the third day of the ritual when that happened and it could have gone south real quick. Um, but I recognized it right away and I knew what to do. And, I, you know, I, I've had experience in that in the past. So I want to say the fourth or fifth day into the ritual, the client hit me up and they were like, I don't know what's going on. And, and I just, you know, want to thank you, Pinky, because this and this started happening. And it's almost as if the doors started opening up for me. Um, my husband, you know, got called back to work and they're giving him like extra hours. And it's just, it, it's, it's crazy. You know, I had a family member that owed me so and so money and out of nowhere, they just, you know, messaged me and they're like, give me your bank information so that I can wire you the money. Like everything started to align for me. And I knew at that point in time that we had done what we were hired to do. But my point to this is use discernment. If it's the same thing as when we're talking about tarot readers, right? I, I obviously I'm on social media, I'm on Snapchat and I'm on Instagram. Um, I'm on TikTok, though I'm not as proactive on TikTok as I should be, <laughs> much like my, my YouTube channel. But um, so I see, I see what practitioners are putting out there. I see what they're teaching. I see what they talk about. I see even, you know, sometimes when they're doing readings and let's say they're doing a love reading and it's a live and the person's asking, is their person going to come back? And they pull out the 10 of wands, the three of swords and the seven of wands. Um, and they're quick to say, yes, this person is, you know, struggling with their emotions, da, 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 but they will be coming back. Like to me, it's very triggering. And it's triggering in different aspects. It's not so much my ego, which I'm sure it has a lot to do with my ego as well. I am a Capricorn. But it has more to do with the ego of the effort, energy, experience, years, education, knowledge that I've gained throughout all those years that I put in the hard work for people that don't even take the respect to learn the most basic shit that's where my ego gets bruised that's where I'm like okay hold up you know this is bullshit and I'm gonna call it out now I've had uh practitioners um reach out to me on Instagram reach out to me on Snapchat uh even comment on my YouTube channel sometimes uh that I shouldn't be teaching certain things because certain things are you know known to be closeted and and that is true. And I agree. But here's where I stand. If you're a practitioner and you decided to marry into a practice, you decided to follow the rules and regulations, then by all means, stay in that lane and fuck off. Because I didn't. I chose to pay my own way to do things my way through many years, through not just with the practice, but in life in general, I have gone through life doing what the fuck I want to do, even if I took heat from it, even if people judged me, even if people condemned me. And I'm talking about on my personal level, family member, friends that have pulled away that throughout the years, you know, because of my beliefs, because of my practice, whatever, um, even being ridiculed by certain family members, like I've gone to the beat of my own drum and because I chose to, right? And I'm not here to expect you guys to like feel like some type of way about it. I, I, I'm unapologetically who the fuck I am. And here's the thing. Throughout the years of the practice, I've been blessed to be in the right place at the right time around the right people that believed in me, that seen gifts in me, that guided me, and perhaps in their hopefulness of me joining that community or joining that coven or joining that religion, they were willing, more than willing, to teach me, show me the ropes. And what did this do? This created in me the knowledge that I've gained and that I've learned and that I've decided to, like I said, not marry into a specific practice, but more to use it and put it in my arsenal of knowledge and experience to use it as I will. And that's exactly what I've been doing throughout the years. 
So I understand when, you know, practitioners get offended that they may see a spell that I'm teaching and they're like, wait, what, what is she doing? I understand where they're coming from, but my point is see it from where I'm coming from. I am not restricted. I will never be restricted. I am not constrained and I am not bound to anything. And I've, this is not just in the practice. This is in every single aspect of my life. I've always carried myself this way. So I understand them being offended, I guess, because I'm teaching certain things that may be in their practice. But again, this is where discernment and this is where self-reflection comes in, right? And it is about looking within. Like I said, I'm not judging those that follow a specific practice, that follow a specific religion, that follow a specific hierarchy. I'm not judging you for that. If anything, I commend you for that. Um, I just, you know... Very early on, I experienced restrictions. Very early on, I experienced people trying to play me down because they were hierarchy and their family came before me. So they passed me down a couple of times to make their bloodline take on higher degrees. And we're talking about spiritual community. And I then decided... Moving forward, whatever I learn, whatever I gain in knowledge and wisdom and practice and whatever, I am not going to restrict myself because only I can decide how far, how high, how whatever I want to go. And that's how I've carried myself through all these years. Now, again, going back to that of using discernment, this is why it's so important to know who you're seeking guidance from. Um, if you've been a client of mine, and, and if you are a client of mine, <laughs> um, whether you've known me for a year, whether you've known me for two, whether you're one of my many old clients that you've been coming to me for the past 10, 16 years or so, um, you know how I am, and you know how I carry myself, and if they've been my client for that long, don't ever think that it's because I've continued to make them feel like they needed me. No, that's never the case. It's because they continue to be my clients because they continue to bring to me people, family, friends that need help. So I, and I, again, if you're one of my clients, you already know. Most of the time when, and I've had clients that come to me like back to back, I want to say like every two, three weeks to get tarot readings. I am the type to sit there and tell you, hey, listen, the tarot is only going to tell you so much and my channeling is only going to tell you so much. Sometimes you have to learn to live in the moment and stop trying to race to the future. I'm the one to tell them that. I'm the one to tell them it's not okay to continuously keep getting your cards read or it's not okay to continuously keep doing work, spell work. Um, even when clients come to me and they want heavy work done, you know, I always make sure to tell them what the process is as well as what may come from that as well as, you know, fair warning. And also, um, you have to be certain and sure that this is what you want. You know what I mean? Like, and they usually tell me, Pinky, it almost seems like you're trying to convince me not to get the work done. And it's not, it's not that I'm trying to convince them of anything because I would never try to manipulate a client's way of seeing or viewing things, if anything, I'm just trying the best I can to help them figure out, is this really what they want? Um, so again, I, I feel that it's very important to talk about that because, again, like I said, there's a lot of practitioners out there that don't talk. Maybe maybe they feel like they're going to be shunned. Maybe they feel like they're going to be judged. Uh, not to say that I'm the only one speaking out. What I'm saying is that I'm going to speak out. You know what I mean? So, again, if you're one of the ones that has been following me for a long time, if you're one of the ones that is in my DM and you're like, Pinky, you shouldn't be showing this. Like, with all due respect, I respect and I appreciate your feedback, but I am not bound or tied to anything or anyone. Therefore, I can teach whoever I want and I can put 
you know, what I've learned and my wisdom out there. And if it's going to work out or help someone out, then bless be. And if if it if they choose to use it in a bad way, that's also bless them be. You know what I mean? <laughs> Blessed be to them because good luck. You know what I mean? So my point to this is, it's important to use discernment when seeking spiritual guidance. Another thing that I always tell my clients is if you go to a spiritual advisor to get a tarot reading and instead of getting answers and getting clarity, you're left feeling confused, more confused, you're left with more doubt and fear, fear is a big one, then don't go back to them. They're not doing their job. They're not doing their duty. They're not giving you the service that you're paying for. They're not. So it's important to understand that, that you're not allowing people to play off of your fears or play off of your doubts because that's not okay. You know, it, it's it's kind of like I said, if you were to go to a surgeon and you are needing surgery and you've heard <laughs> or even on you, like let's say they operated on you and, you know, they left your stitches and after a month or so, they're not calling you back, they're not checking on you, they're not, then you know that they're not really doing their job because the job is from the very beginning all the way to the end. Do you know what I mean? It's the same thing when I'm working spell work for clients and let's say they don't, uh, after the ritual is done, they always give me feedback that they're surprised because I check up on them after the work has been done and they're thrown aback because they're like, once it's been done, like I don't hear from them and that, that's not how I carry myself. I've never carried myself that way and even if it gets to the point of, and it's gotten a few times to the point where I just can't really respond to everyone the way they would want me to, you're still going to hear from me. Um, if, let's say, you're a client of mine and you reach out to me today and I don't get back to you till like next week on Monday, I'm still going to get back to you. It just means you need to understand that I'm dealing with hundreds, hundreds of clients. And as time has progressed, I've made it more... What's the word I'm looking for? I have specific number of cases that I pick up because I also, it is important for me, for my sanity, for my physical energy to be aligned as well. So there was a point in time, I want to say two years ago, where it was just spell work after spell work after spell work. And even after my deities would advise, you need to chill, I pushed myself to the point where I couldn't get out of bed for almost three days, literally couldn't get out of bed. Um... And that was, you know, that was my saint's way of telling me, I told your ass. <laughs> so I've learned to honor and respect that. And also, you know, like I said, it's important, you guys, to use discernment. It's important to um, know who you're seeking guidance from because, again, giving you the example of that client, you know, think of it this way. If the person, and and I can tell you when I looked into it, she had gone to multiple practitioners, but only two really tried to help her. And the one kind of realized, oh, shit, this is out of my league. And they just stopped. And the other one tried and kept trying. Now, here's the thing. When you're dealing with things that you don't really understand and it's out of your control, literally out of your control, it gets worse for the client. That's where the client started to experience literal health issues. You know, because what you do is you trigger those spirits. They're going to go on attack and defense mode because they were set out to do something. So it's going to be worse for the client or for you. So this is why it's so important to know who you're going to. You know, it's kind of like I said, um, it's become this aesthetic, right? Uh it's it's this this hype of oh you know being a witch uh you know let's say you've been practicing for like three months and you want to call yourself a witch by all means I don't care I mean I kind of do care but to each their own I understand that um but you cannot 
try to get involved with people's like real everyday life pretending that you can help them when you're actually making it worse and that's where you as the client or as you know the person that is seeking that spiritual guidance this is where you need to use discernment um i can't tell you how many times i'll give you an example going back to a couple of years ago i had a few clients that came to me for spell work um after that was done i want to say like three or four months after that i started to see them on tiktok and they were claiming to be tarot readers and they were claiming to sell spell work and to me that like i said it, it's it's an offense <laughs> on so many levels for me because it's like how can you how can you portray yourself to be something you're not first of all second of all how can you put yourself in such a predicament of trying or claiming that you can help people when you yourself haven't even been able to learn to master your own manifestations nonetheless you know put the cloak of i'm a witch like it doesn't work that way um and we're not just talking about like calling yourself a witch i'm i'm talking about in general right we're talking about in general the spiritual community this is why you know i get so triggered because i deal with clients on everyday basis i deal with real shit i deal with real clients i you know get hired to go to their homes and do cleansings and things can get out of whack and dealing with paranormal shit and dealing with if you're not adapt for that and you go and you upset these spirits you're gonna leave they're just gonna get in their car and go and you're left there with your family you're left with with your kids to deal with with what just happened and most of the time you just piss them off that's that's what it is so it's very heartbreaking for me when clients come to me and they're telling me like they're about to lose their house because they gotten so bad into debt trying to pay for services that they're not even getting um for others it's like it's it's been it's gotten worse instead of getting better and you know it, it, we deal with all kind of crazy things right this is this is what i've chosen to make my life <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not complaining by any means. If you're my client, you know I adore you. You know I love you guys and um yeah, but it's really triggering when people, you know, claim to be something that they're not and just are okay with fucking up people's lives. I'm not okay with that and this is why I decided to do this episode. I wanted to encourage you guys to use discernment. You know what I mean? There is thousands and thousands of YouTube channels here, for example, where there's practitioners and they're teaching you and they're not telling you what this is for, why you're using that ingredient. They're not teaching anything. They're just telling you what to do and then you go and do it. And then it gets bad. And then you can't figure out why all of a sudden your life is upside down. And and then I'm left you come to me and I'm left to deal with having to clear all that out or if you've gone to other practitioners and they've made a fucking mess of your life and then you come to me and I ha I I'm going to charge you for the spell work that I'm doing for you I'm going to charge you for the clearing or the cleansing or whatever because that's my work that that that's my energy that's my effort but I'm not charging you the extra for clearing all all that shit I'm not ask, I'm not charging you extra for you know undoing whatever was done from someone that was not adept or wasn't capable or wasn't able do you get me so it it is frustrating it is um offensive even you know when when i see all these people trying to sell uh the spiritual practice when i know some of them haven't put in the work haven't put in the artiest fucking 
labor that goes behind really learning the ranks. Even learning the, the, the most simplistic things, which is like the elements and properties of herbs, for example. You know, and, and they want to show you how to do something because they've seen it on someone else's channel or they've seen it on someone else's TikTok or it's a trend or whatever. It's very frustrating. Um, and again, you know, I've had, throughout the years, I've had many people come to my channel and they comment like, oh, you talk too much or it's too long, get to the point. Like, then that channel's not for you, point blank, period. I'm giving you, if I'm teaching you how to do a spell, think of it this way. The 15 or 20 minutes that it's taking me to teach you how to do the spell probably took me like a fucking year or two years to understand the concept behind even the construct of that spell. You know, and I'm pretty much giving you just a glimpse <laughs> of why you're using this ingredient and why you're using that and why we're doing this. Do you get me? So... Again, you guys, use discernment. Um, really, I know that it is a touchy subject. I know that it's going to ruffle a lot of feathers. But hey, this is why I decided to do a podcast in the first place. Uh, it is within my nature to ruffle feathers. So I, I, again, like I said, I am not bound. I am not um, chained to anything. I owe no one any explanations of why I do what I do, but I'm giving it to you because I care for you guys. Those of you guys that have been following my channel, those of you guys that, you know, are my clients, those of you guys that are or have been watching my podcast, I'm doing it for you because I'm giving you, it's like I tell my clients on my Snapchat, right? Use and abuse me. <laughs> Use and abuse my knowledge. Um, that's the whole reason why I have manifestation books out. That's the reason why I have the shadow book out. That's the reason why I have the gratitude journal out. It's not for me. It's to teach you guys what ta what cost me many years of learning. Because everyone is capable. And again, when I say, when you seek spiritual guidance, make sure that you're going to someone that is spiritually gifted. The reason I say that is not to say that other practitioners or that the people you're going to or whatever, that they're not gifted. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that there are levels to this shit. Just like there are levels to being a general surgeon, to being a fucking um, neurosurgeon. Like, there's levels to this. Do you get me? So, when you go to someone for guidance and they're giving you exactly that they're giving you guidance they're giving you understanding they're giving you um peace they're bringing you peace they're making you feel within you that you have clarity and now your soul doesn't feel restless then they're doing exactly what you're hiring them to do but if they're fear-mongering you if everyone you go to to get a reading is telling you that you have some type of curse on you and that you need to remove it and that they'll do it for so and so, like, and they trigger the fear in you, they're not looking out for you. They're not. I cannot tell you guys how many clients throughout the years, okay, throughout the years, I've had so many clients come to me willing to pay me anything, literally willing to pay me anything because they've told me, I know I'm certain, I am for sure that I am cursed and I want you to remove it and I don't care how much you're going to charge me. And when I look into them or when they come in person and I read them, they're not carrying nothing. You know what they're carrying? The curse they placed on themselves. And that is something that liberation can quickly take care of but they're certain that they're cursed. And they're not. And because they've gone to so many people that have fed into this fear mongering that they believed it to the point where when you believe something on a subconscious level, right, on a deeper level, once you create a belief system of something, it manifests. It becomes a reality. And 
again, a person that is looking out to the best of your interest is going to be straightforward and honest, like I have with those clients. And talking about that, um, I think it was like six months ago or, or four months ago, something like that, where I had a client that was brought to me by another client. It, it was someone that they, you know, um, spoke highly of me and they brought them to me. This individual was certain that they had been cursed. They, He told me that he had gone to multiple people, that, but they just can't remove the curse. How are they going to remove a curse that is not there that you've only placed on yourself? When I looked into it, I was like, no, honey, you're, you're not cursed. You know what it is? You decided that you're cursed. You kept repeating this to yourself until it became a reality because your subconscious took that as a reality, as a belief system. And then what happens, it starts to materialize. Everything around you starts, you know, to become blockages. Uh, you start to experience a flat tire and you're like, fuck, it's affecting me. Um just bad shit starts to happen. And he was like, no, Pinky, I know that I am. Like, tell me what it is that I need to do. Tell me what it is that, you know, I'll pay. It doesn't matter. Put the number on it, you know, please. And I was like, it's not. You're not carrying anything other than what you have created for yourself. But... I will teach you how to rebuke or how to turn around that situation. So what did I do? I asked the client to come and see me for seven consecutive days. Why seven? Because that's when you start to create a habit. Right? So I started doing the first three, uh, the first three times that he came to me, I did a cleansing, um, a full sweep and a cleansing. And then the following days, what it was, was basically teaching him how to liberate himself. What happened? Within two weeks, his situation turned around. Did I charge him extra for all of that, that any other person would have charged ridiculous amounts? No, I didn't. Because a lot of the time, right, more often than not, when you pick up on a fear, fear is a very powerful thing. And when you pick up on a fear, and you keep telling and repeating yourself that, you're just empowering it. And it's not to say that clients haven't came to me and they are actually carrying shit, of course, and we handle that. But I've had, throughout the years, people that come to me and they are certain, they are convinced, they're like 100% this is what, no, it's not. And then they look at you like you're the crazy one, right? <laughs> It doesn't, it, it's important to use discernment. It's important to know that seeking spiritual guidance is, uh, I can speak for myself. When someone comes to me seeking spiritual guidance, it is my duty, it is my responsibility, and it is my honor to help them, to guide them, to assist them, right? Right? But also understanding that at some point in time, you kind of got to do the work yourself. And what I mean by that is, like I said, when clients keep coming to me like every week or so to get a reading, I'm the one to be like, hey, you're starting to make it a habit of any decision you want to make, you want to get guidance. And what does that do? That remove. it's, it's almost like you're kind of giving your power up and you are... No longer, and believe it or not, you will feel, emotionally, you will feel like you, you are incapable of making decisions. And that's not what I'm here for. And, you know, clients have, in the past, have told me, like, <laughs> Pinky, isn't this your business? Like, what the hell? And I'm like, yes, but it is my business to do good by you. I've had clients want to do shit that 
I pumped their brakes. You don't want to go down this road. It's either because I see something in them or it's because they are, you know, treading very lightly a path that they don't want to walk through. And it is, again, my duty to remind them of that. To make sure that they are certain of what they want. So, again, like I said, it it is, yes, in the practice, in the spiritual community, there are certain things that are closed practices. We just are not allowed. That's true. I should say they are not allowed. That's true. But the knowledge and the experience and the wisdom I've gained, I don't have to give explanations to anyone. So use discernment when you're seeking help or guidance. Understand that just like you have the ability to seek out help, to seek out guidance, know and understand that you can yourself build yourself to the point of being able to awaken your gifts. And it's like I said, when you go to someone, make sure that they're gifted or spiritually gifted. Doesn't mean that you're not. Doesn't mean that other practitioners are not. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that a lot of the time, um, and, and this is very true, most practitioners that have been in the practice for like longer than five years become so wrapped up in it that they see themselves like I've learned what I had to learn and they have such ego and pride and that's when they stop learning and if you've been following my channel if you've been following my podcast you know I'm always talking about that the moment you no longer want to learn or the moment you think you know everything you hit plateau and you're not going to grow or move from there the practice is all about continuously learning and being open and being receptive to other ways of doing things. There are things that I'm still learning, that I'm still tapping into. And I'm blessed to be able to say that through that process, through that incredible need for me to feed my curiosity and to feed my knowledge because I have such thirsty curiosity for knowledge, I continue to grow and I continue to expand and I continue to master better at what I do. So this is not to say that other practitioners, like I said, are not gifted or that they cannot be gifted. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that if the people you're going to, to get guidance, let me give you an example. I had a client, and this client is of a religion, right? He's a practitioner himself. And the reason why he seeked me out was because he was in desperate need. He, he had hit a plateau. He didn't know what to do about it. And when he would go to his, or I should say, when he would go to uh, to his godmother, which is the one that's supposed to be teaching him, to ask him or to ask her, you know, I need clarity on this or why aren't you teaching me that? It, it was almost like guilt tripping him and making him feel like you're out of line for asking me to teach you when that is their duty. So he seeked out someone outside of his community, outside of his practice, so that he could get a better understanding. And even coming to me, he felt very guilty for doing that. And... When I did him, initially when he first came to me, because it was in-person consultation, when he first came to me, I just seen the distraught in his face. I can tell in his energy that he was like way off. I immediately sat him down and I was like, okay, first of all, you need to let go of the shame or guilt that you're feeling right now because I can read that shit from a mile away. Um, there is no judgment here. And if you're a follower or if you're a client of mine, you already know how I work. I always tell my clients, 
do not look at me like there is judgment on my part because that's not my job. That's not my duty. Think of me as a mirror. I'm just a reflection of what you're going through or what you're experiencing. I'm just giving you a more clear picture. So that's what I told the client. We got to the nitty gritty. We started getting into it. And immediately I told him, you've been fed bullshit. And if the practitioner that you paid thousands of dollars to, you know, teach you is getting offended because you're asking to be taught, then you should use your discernment. That is not a teacher you want to learn from. Right? And it's not the first time, it's not the second time, it's not the third time, it's not going to be the last time that I deal with situations like that. But this is where we need to use our discernment. This is where you need to understand, okay, be practical about things. Since then, this client comes to me for workings, for consultations, major decisions that he's doing in his business or that he's doing in, in, in his everyday life, he comes to me. Cleansings and protections, he comes to me. And along the way, I've built such a connection with him that I've been teaching him. Why? Because why not? But this is, this is my point, right? And, and it's kind of like a conversation or a point that I've made um, when we've touched bases like on my Instagram or on my Snapchat when we've touched bases about religion. From a very, very, very early childhood, you know, uh, both my family from both sides, mother and father, extremely spiritual, extremely religious, I should say. Um, and from a very young age, I was extremely curious. I would question everything. I was probably that annoying little girl that's always asking you 51 questions and you're just like, shut the fuck up already. <laughs> so I was always that way. It's in my nature. So I had questions. When my family started taking me to an example, you know, my, my, um, what's the word I'm looking for? My belief system, my background is uh, Catholicism. So when, at a very young age, I started going to catechism, right? Um, and they tell you, if you have questions asked, da 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 I, I see I, I didn't like I had no concept of filtering things so I, w I was like okay I got tons of questions so I started asking questions I'm not sure if I've had this I'm, I'm sure in one of my videos I've co I commented about this or I talked about it but anyways at the time I would go to catechism with my grandmother because she was extremely religious my grandmother, the one that recently passed. And she was hardcore Catholic. So she would go to the choir. She would go to practice. She, she was always in church. And, you know, she would tell me, if you have questions, ask the priest. That's what he's here for. So my innocent, not innocent, because I, I don't think I was ever innocent, <laughs> but my mind didn't know how to filter right I would just say what was on my mind so I went up to the priest and I was like I was wondering about this and he gave me a vague answer and then I asked him another another thing and he gave me another vague answer I was very young you guys this is how curious my mind was I figured out that it was it wasn't adding up <laughs> So then I told him, okay, so my, my real question here is, why do I have to seek forgiveness and tell you my sins when you yourself are just a man? It was 
and I still remember this conversation because it was traumatizing for me. It's something that I've done a lot of healing and a lot of work done because of it, right? Keep in mind, it was like during the week and they would go for choir practice and all that. So he had a bunch of people up in the church, right? And when I asked him that, he was so offended. He got up and he started speaking very loudly, um, saying that, you know, this child is possessed. Uh, you know, she's possessed with the spirit of, you know, the devil because you're challenging God and all of this, right? Keep in mind, I'm a child. So I was traumatized. Everyone's looking at me. Everyone's pointing at me. I'm like, what the fuck? I felt attacked where I was supposed to feel safe, right? Because I felt like, oh, you can ask him anything you want. He's a priest, right? So there was a lot going on, but he was basically condemning me. Now, keep in mind, my grandmother, bless her soul and her heart, which is why I love her, which is why she's been a very important part in my life my whole life. She was, again, like I said, keep in mind, she was highly respected in that community. She was very religious. She was very devoted. And when she seen my reaction, right, and the way the priest was speaking about me, she came rushing in. She grabbed me. She looked at the priest and she pretty much told him what she thought. We walked out of the church and she never returned to that church again. And on our way home, I remember her telling me, don't you ever feel ashamed. Don't you ever feel any type of fucking way just because someone doesn't have the answer and they feel attacked and they feel like they need to attack your intelligence. Again, keep in mind, I'm a child. I had no idea what all of this would do. Right. But growing up, she was she was my ride or die. She would like she was like whatever it is I do, I can never do no harm to her. You know what I mean? And I will forever be grateful for her because she gave me that safety, that emotional support, that understanding that you know what, if you are the way you are, this is how you were created, and there's a purpose behind it. And don't you ever feel shame of it. But it is definitely something that traumatized me for a very long time. So from there on out. I started questioning all authorities. I started questioning, you know, is this really the religion I want to be in? Is this really this? Is this really? And that's where everything opened up for me. And I started to decide to walk my own path. And since then, I'm very blessed and thankful that I was able to experience that because no matter how hard it was, like, I didn't realize how hard it was overcoming that. But looking back, I know that it had a lot to do with the fact of my rebellious nature. And I'm blessed to be able to have experienced everything I have experienced in life because I know that I can never look back and say someone made me do this or someone forced me to do this or someone this or that. No. I will always own up to whatever it is that I do and I decided. I made that happen. And it is extremely empowering. So... My point to all of this is, again, use discernment when you're seeking spiritual guidance. Use your intuition because your intuition is never going to lead you astray. And like I said, if you've been following me for a while, if you yourself are a, part a practitioner and you feel like maybe you're not gifted in certain areas, don't put yourself in that box. Explore learn, practice until you become great at it. If you yourself are a practitioner and you are married to a practice or a religion and they're like, you're very gifted in this area, stay here. If you feel within you that you could be doing so much more, don't allow people to put you in a box. Continue seeking knowledge, continue practicing, continue tapping into whatever it is that your gifts are because they will open up. It's it's kind of the conversation that I had recently with one of my um one of my colleagues, <laughs> uh, another spiritual practitioner um 
that I've bonded throughout the years. And he was telling me, he was like, you know, I feel like I'm not gifted in defense magic. And I was like, well, what makes you say that? And he was like, well, because at times I've tried, it, it kind of backfired. And when he said backfired, immediately I thought, okay, first of all, that's, how did it backfire? Well, the, you know, the community that I'm in, um, da, 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 so and so, basically. So what it was, it was that the person that is higher or above him told him, you should stay here in this corner and do this because this is what you're good at. Um, immediately, I got so offended and I told him, and what did you say to that? And he was like, maybe he's right. You know, he is higher than me. I said, okay. Has he taken the time to teach you defense magic? He was like, no, I kind of learned it by, my, by myself. Okay, so how is a guru or a teacher or, you know, a godfather, how are they going to condemn you for doing bad when they're not even taking the time to teach you the ropes? Do you get what I'm saying? So in life, in life, there's always going to be people that are going to try to put you in a box or that are going to try to limit you, or that are going to tell you, you know what, you're good at this, but you're not good at that. Don't listen to them. Don't. Don't take it. You are limitless. You are capable of doing whatever the fuck you set your mind and your heart to do. Yes, if we're talking about the practice, it's not going to come easy because you need to learn. <laughs> But I assure you that if you put in the work, you will become, most of the time I've noticed, people that try to put you in a box, you outrank them. You go above them or your capabilities become so much stronger. And that's the reason why they don't want to teach you because they themselves didn't put in the hard work, determination, the effort of learning to master whatever they're known for. And they are intimidated because you know what? When I was learning from a high priestess, when she would speak to me about certain things that she would see I was very gifted at, but she was like, but you're kind of weak on this. And then our next week's lesson was primarily focusing on my weakness. That's how you know that you're dealing with the real deal because they're going to want to sharpen your abilities. They're going to want to strengthen your weaknesses. So use discernment. Listen to your intuition. And if you are a practitioner yourself, Try the best you can not to judge others harshly. I am not judging the ones that talk a lot of shit or have a big ass mouth. I'm not judging you guys. If anything, I love that type of attention. But here's the thing. Don't, don't try to put me in a category that you chose to put yourself because I've defiantly chose not to put myself in that, in that line. Do you get what I'm saying? Well, I hope that this gives you guys some type of insight. If you guys like these episodes, comment below, let me know. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you guys can get notified of the new episodes going up. We have tons of new episodes, and I also have the episode of I Dated All 12 Zodiac Signs, so you don't have to, with a guest that is going to be giving you guys insight and feedback as well. We're just going to have a blast in that episode. So you guys stay tuned for that, and I will see you guys till then. Bye-bye, my lovelies.